Hi, I'm Cece, and welcome back to the Backyard server. I am here at where my new station is going to go, and I'm really excited for this one, as I've got lots of new fun little designs and tricks to use, and I think this will be a nice way of showing how to integrate the rail systems into your own survival world. So let's get started. The most important first step, though, is going to be planning. You've got to make sure you know exactly what you're building and where you're building it. So basically, I've set up a rough layout of what the station is going to be like. And this is going to be a bit of a special station in that it's kind of two stations in one. Basically, down there is my base. And then up here is BH's base. And we're very close to each other. So I think it makes a bit more sense to have our stations kind of combined into one place and not bother having to have like separate stations so close to each other. So the way that we're going to do that is basically having this side be mine and then that side be BH's. And then in the middle here, we will share a ticket machine. So I'm going to start by building out my side and then we can just sort of flip flop it over to BH's side once we have everything all sorted. And here is the platform design. Since this is a dual station, I'm going to have over here one to demonstrate. And then after I have shown you how it kind of works, I'll show you how to build it over on BH's side. Since it's going to be the exact same design, just sort of flip flopped over. And basically, this is a multi-use platform. So it works as both an incoming and an outgoing. While the station over at spawn has an individual platform for incoming and outgoing um, minecarts. Basically, it will filter minecarts into each bay individually. So that's second bay, then it goes into the third bay, fourth bay, and so on. And then it works exactly the same in reverse. So when I press this button, it will send out all the minecarts one at a time into a full, just evenly spaced, yeah, evenly spaced, train network which is great and I, oh, I love it it's so cool each of these bays has a detector rail at like a slant here and when a minecart is placed onto that detector rail it will flip the rail in front of it to go to the next one and then the same happens over here and then the same happens over here and it keeps repeating over and over again until you get to the end where it just kind of stops and then in reverse it just lifts up this fence post which lets the minecart just go forward. Let's get into showing you how to build this. Okay, so step one is going to be putting in your rails. And, oh, hi. You want to do it in this sort of formation. So just a straight line of any block you want. And then you want to have this sort of layout here with uh, your block of choice. But make sure that this block here is either a half slab or some transparent block like a glass or leaf or something. Basically any block that can't be powered. So the layout is basically powered rail, regular rail, powered rail, detector rail. And then up here, you want to place a rail up top and then just remove it. And that will leave this detector rail in a diagonal position, which will let the minecart just slide down when it doesn't have a block uh, blocking it. And then just want to repeat the same layout for every single one of the bays for as many bays as you need. Now to power all the powered rails, uh, I think the best way of doing that is just place a block here and then just put a lever on the back and flick it and that'll power all the adjacent rails and then just do the same on all of them. Not like that. Like that. There we go. And then just place in some blocks on top and this will be your platform height. You don't have to have blocks above the rails, but if you do, make sure that they are transparent. Otherwise, you will suffocate when you go in through a minecart. But... For any spots in front of a rail, you're going to have to use a trap door as a minecart will not fit underneath a slab in this formation. And that is pretty much the platform design. So now we'll get into doing some of the redstone. I want to first extend this wall up a little bit to here. So for the input, all you need to do is just put a button with a one block gap above the detector rail and then just run a redstone line directly behind it. But if you have too many of these bays, you might need to just add in a repeater at some point just to make sure that the signal will actually reach from one end to the other. So I'm not going to be putting in a button on the first uh, bay, and that's because we're going to be using the ticket system my friends and I designed. And with the ticket, uh, and because of that, the front minecart is always going to be a chest minecart, so there's no need for a button. So we can slightly tighten the redstone by just putting in a repeater here facing into a block. Then just want to have a redstone torch on top, 
with a block on top of that, and then just two bits of any block you want going here. And now let's get into doing the pistons. So from here, I just want to put a piston on the back of this block here. And then I'm just going to run a repeated pattern of slab, piston, slab, piston. These don't have to be slabs. I'm just doing that because it gives a little bit more headroom when you're on the platform. You can use any block you want. Oops, not like that though. And then just put a fence post or any block you want on the bottom. I recommend using a transparent block or a like block with a smaller hitbox. Just so when you come through on the train, you don't suffocate on it. Okay, and then on top here, what you do is just run some redstone onto here. And then place down a repeater with four ticks. Redstone dust, repeater with four ticks. Redstone dust, repeater with four ticks. Redstone dust, and keep going. You can switch out the redstone dust for a full block if you would prefer. And now, when you press this button, it should just power all of these sequentially and... Yep, there we go. That's all good. So, step numero next is going to be down below. Ow. So, this block down here is where the detector rail is. So, what you need to do is just place a block in like so. And then just place a redstone dust on top. Then, you just need to have a redstone torch off the side. A block there. And then, a dust. And then, a block next to it. And then, a torch. Now, this torch here, it will depend on your orientation. Not that orientation. The rail orientation. Basically, rails in Minecraft are directional. So if I place this down, it's going to pull towards that way. But if I was to place a one in reverse and stand over here, it is going to instead pull to the right. And yeah, that causes an issue in that when this rail is unpowered, it's going right, when it's powered, it goes left. But it is inverted for this. And basically, you need to have these torches set up in a way where this rail is always going to be facing into this way unless a minecart is on that tetra rail. And if your system does require it to be inverted, all you need to do is just do a torch back here with a block and a torch here. And that will do the opposite. But obviously, I don't need to, so let's just put it back to the way it was. So, yeah, that's that's just uh, a little quirk with minecart rails. It, it makes the rails more reliable, but it can be a little bit uh, weird <laughs> initially. And then from here, all you need to do is just keep repeating the same uh, pattern over and over again. It's the exact same one each time. So now this is all set up, so when you place a minecart onto that tetra rail, it should flip that. But one of the issues with the tetra rails is that it takes a little while for it to unpress. So when I break this minecart, you'll see it stays red for just a little bit longer. And that can cause some issues, but if I send a minecart out, it goes that way. So basically, we have to sort of set in a bit of a reset line which will preemptively switch these tracks over and stop the minecarts from accidentally going into the wrong bay. So back here on this line behind the buttons, we have this repeater going into this block. Uh, just down below, what you need to do is just put in a bit of a redstone line that goes down below. You can just sort of staircase your way down. And you, you should have one, two, three, four redstone dust in total. Then on this last block, you want to go back on yourself with a repeater like that into another block. So it should look like this. And then you just need to have a block underneath and then come along here and just make a long line going all the way to the end. Then just put redstone onto all of that. And you're also going to need to have a repeater somewhere along here if you have lots of bays. Just to make sure the redstone signal reaches. Then every bit where it connects up to one of these modules just put in another block and then just put a repeater onto each of those blocks and then the final step is going to be having a platform out here that goes back by four blocks and then here three blocks and then from here you want to have a repeater running into here with a redstone dust there and there and then some comparators like so and then up here just before that powered rail, you want to have a detector rail. And then from here, you can just have any rails, like powered rails running this way. And then just power that with the lever. And 
that should be everything set up. Oh, wait. Also, you need to add one tick of delay to this repeater here. That is integral. I'll show you why in a sec. So now, if I was to put in some minecarts here, it would switch these tracks over. And when I press this button, it will instantly switch those tracks back before the minecarts even go. And when those minecarts go over that detector rail, it will power that repeater, or it will lock that repeater, keeping the tracks switched until every single minecart has passed through the system. And here is a little look at it with more of the rails. So you see it gets locked on, keeping all of those tracks down there switched until this time's out, and then that unpowers and everything is now back to normal. So if you were to send one of these minecarts back over, it would just work. Yay! And a really cool thing about this design compared to some of my older designs is that even if you would have like a full train, it would reset each of these tracks. But if you remove one of the minecarts in the middle, it will switch it back. So when a new minecart enters the system, it will just take that old minecart slot. So something I should probably know is that this will break if there isn't a minecart in the first slot. For the design we're using on the server, that's not an issue because there always has to be a minecart in the first slot. But if you want to make sure that it doesn't break, you can just add in a pulse extender at the end here. Like so. And that will keep this uh, repeater on for longer, giving the minecarts plenty of time to get over there. So yeah, that's just something you should probably know. Now back to other CC. Now we can get on to the really cool bit, which is going to be the ticket machine. Yay! So for those of you who aren't new to my uh, channel or just aren't that familiar with the rail system, we have a really cool ticket system my friends and I designed, and you can check out a video in the description to get full information on that. But the basic idea is that there'll be a minecart at the front of the system, and that minecart chest down here will have a bunch of items inside which will act as tickets. And basically, these items would be read by item filters along the track, and depending on which ticket gets taken, it will basically tell the whole train system which direction to go. And basically over here, we'll have these barrels which will have pre-made routes. So for example, this middle barrel could be to go to Sprinkles Base over there. So if we want to get sprinkles, we just need a tough brick, mud brick, and dirt ticket. Uh, we'll use renamed iron nuggets for this, uh, and I'm going to probably use some custom textures, which will be really cool. But I haven't got those designed just yet, so we'll just use these as placeholders. And basically, what you do is just take one of each of these and put it into the minecart over there. But that can be a bit annoying, trying to like grab like one each, and it's like that's a pain. So what I want to do is I want to set up a little basin of water down here. So when you throw it in, it'll just uh, collect all the tickets and put them into a minecart for you. Which is the same system as we have over at Spawn, and it's my preferred ticket system. The only difference is that this one is going to be two-sided, so I need to basically have two of these ticket things, like, back-to-back, -back, which might be a little bit interesting to try and wire down here, but I think it should be fine. And here is the system all done. Basically, uh, inside this barrel, I've got the three tickets, so I just need to press Q on each of these once. And then down below, there is filling up a minecart, and then that will go up this tube any second. There it is. And it'll go over the top and just drop down into the first bay. And then these three tickets are all in here, and they'll take you to your destination. Basically, the redstone is just a little comparator that reads the hopper. This is where the tickets go in, like just down there. Goes into this pulse extender over here, which then powers this dropper or dispenser, sorry, placing a minecart down onto this bit here. At the same time, this torch gets unpowered, which will then unpower the rail here. So if I just quickly put in like the five redstone just in here, minecart will go out and then it will fill up. And then once this pulse extender times out, it will send the minecart off. Now I'll do a little walk around of this. Pretty simple. And the pulse center is mainly just there to give the player up top just plenty of time to actually uh, put in the item. Each time a new item goes in, it will like re-top up the uh, the pulse extender. And then once it's, it's been a while, then it will send it off. 
And that is pretty much the functionality of the entire station sorted. I just need to do copy it over to uh, BH's side. But there's actually one more thing that I want to do on my side specifically, which is going to be about organizing the storage carts, because that, that sounds really fun and I just want to give it a go. So let me quickly just finish uh, cleaning up uh, BH's side and then we can get working onto that bit of redstone. So from this point on, it's going to start getting a little bit more experimental. Uh, basically, what I want to do is I want to have a route that goes off to the left here. And that route will only be for uh, minecart chests and uh, like hopper chests and stuff. Hopper minecarts. And the way I'm going to be able to tell the system which way to go is by using the tickets. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to rename some nuggets to cargo. And if a minecart has a cargo ticket, it will send it down this way. To put in a cargo ticket, and it should go down to the left. It doesn't, it's too fast. Dang, okay. Uh, okay, let's go you just move this over a smidge. It does mean I'm going to have to push this um this rail like this this will be the main rail i got to push this back more but that's fine i'd rather push this back than push the building forward the first two will have tickets in the last one won't so the first two should go down the last one shouldn't go 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 the issue is that this detector rail is staying on for too long which ends up powering this redstone line. So when the next ticket goes through, it's not able to actually send a new signal because there's currently one in this here. So what I need to do is over here, this pack, this detector rail, I've just set up a little, a uh, little piston. So that should push up, which will basically just send off a one tick pulse over here. And you'll see. Let's just do a little test, see if this fixes it. So it'll do a quick pulse. And then that line stayed on for a little bit longer than that line. First two should go down, last one should go in. So there's a new problem. <laughs> um, okay, we've got some bad news here. Basically, we are limited by this detector rail. This detector rail is physically not fast enough to handle what I want it to do. Okay, I'm going to do a quick slow-mo demonstration for you. So you see how the detector rail didn't reset before the next minecart came in. Which means that the input just gets completely eaten and it doesn't even know anything happened. So I spent ages doing some troubleshooting with different designs and stuff. And the one I've done in the end is the exact same design I've done everywhere else. Yay! <laughs> I tried to learn a new skill, but it didn't work. Yeah, I, I do know... Oh, God. I do know how to fix this. Basically, just have two of these lanes. One of them will go down one. The next one will go down the next one. And then by the time that that one's gone down, the next one should be open. So you're basically passing the minecarts back and forth. So that that, that is a way of dealing with it. But for this, for this situation, it probably isn't really worth all the extra hassle. So I basically went with Old Faithful here. Uh, we've got a item filter that goes into these droppers here. It puts the item into the bottom one. Then that compiler reads it, sends the signal over to this torch up here, which is the one that switches the track. And then... And then up here, we have the detector rail that then activates the pulse extender. And that will basically just turn off this torch. And then once... Every minecart in the train has passed by. Turn the torch back on, which then send a pulse down to this bottom dropper reset in the system. Now, the issue with this is that it means that I have to have all of my cargo minecarts uh, in order. Like, I, I have to make sure all the minecarts are behind me. But the thing is, that's what I was going to do anyway. So, like, I don't really know why I bothered with anything else in the first place. Basically, when you have a train, it's best to have your ticket marker up front because, well, that's the one that guides you. Then have your players and any mobs or entities that you want to carry. And then at the back, have all your minecart chests. And the reason for that is that minecart chests, when they are full, are slightly heavier than a regular minecart, which means that they start to kind of slow down and bunch up over the course of, like, a long trip. And if it's a very long trip, 
if you're behind the minecart chest, you might end up bumping into it and then just stopping the train. So either way, you want to have your minecart chest at the back of the line, which means all I need to do is just have the, the first minecart chest just have a ticket in and then the rest of them will all go in. So I don't even need to have a ticket per one. So overall, last two hours completely wasted. Now I can start working on the underneath section and also trying to get in this bit like the actual main rail. Luckily the main rail won't be that difficult, it's essentially just this three times over. I will need to push this over a bit because we're kind of running out of space over here, but luckily I can have the redstone on this side, so I won't have to push it too much, but we'll see. But if you want to give it a little ride, feel free. Absolutely. Please press the button above you. Oh. There you go. Oh. Oh, that oh my god! <laughs> Oh no, I... Oh no, I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. I didn't even consider that. Oh no. Uh, we'll do it, we'll do it for I the... Don't that. I just put that in, I didn't even test that bit yet. Okay, we'll do it on this side. This side works. Oh. There you go, that's how it's meant to do it. And then you do it again and you get kidnapped. Uh, okay, I fixed the uh, kidnapping issue uh, with these bits of redstone lines here. Basically, from these two pulse extenders underneath the detector rails, I've set up some redstone. From this side, when you go over this pulse extender on the way out, it will um, just power the rail, turning it over like so, and that will send you over that way correctly. But if it comes from the other way, it will go into this repeater, which will then lock the other one which should just uh, stop the track from switching. And that doesn't affect the cargo tickets at all, it's just a way of sort of overriding this track and pretending it's not there if the tickets aren't being used. Okay, that was there. Uh, <laughs> that, that should be all sorted. So, yeah, uh, back to what we're doing. I'm also not really a fan of this being uh, raised up anymore. I think I want to maybe either half slab this or just full block it. Uh, I think I kind of like the half slabs a bit more. And that means also less work since I don't have to raise up all this stuff too. I'm also considering switching out these fence posts for these slabs as well. Maybe not mud brick, but I think it should allow me to move around a bit easier. I don't think it should break it. It should work fine. Yeah, okay, it does work. And also, oh, I feel nice all the time. Also, it means the minecart doesn't actually slip down as much, so it's a bit easier to grab it too. So yeah, I think I'll switch these out for half labs. It's just a work in progress. I don't know what I'm going to do for here. We'll we'll get to it. I'll get into like a little bit, bit of a creative montage maybe. Oh my god, I think it's done. That took so long. Um, but it is it's all it's all in. Look, it is an absolute madhouse of redstone. Like, there's just so many wires, like it is such a faff to try and work through here, and oh, it is not as clean as I would normally go with, but it works, so that's all I care about. But luckily this bit down here is actually quite nice to look at. This is very clean. But we'll go into this in a second. Let's first focus on the outside here with the T-junctions. Uh, this is an absolute mess. Basically, this area is like two T-junctions kind of just smushed together, which means there's a lot of redstone I had to do for it. Basically, each junction has three of those item filter things. One there, one there, one there, and then over here there's one da da da. And these two over here are also the cargo ones, so it's like back to back, which is a bit weird, but uh, so by default, these T-junctions will turn left, because that's kind of the way that goes to the most amount of stuff. And I still want a way to go right, so I have a right ticket, which should just take you to the right, like so, there it is. Uh, it, it, it does kind of go on this track for a second, but I, I that, that's fine, whatever, I don't care. I don't think it's going to be enough traffic to justify having it go over. I guess I could have just had it go yeah, whatever. Um, I'm excited it's done. And then the same as over here at BH's, by default it goes left, but then that turns it right. But then you have the... Ooh, 
Then you have these two uh, uh, hoppers on this side. This first one. Well, by default, the the system should send you forward. So it ends up over there. Yep, great. With a BH ticket, it should turn you at this first junction and then send you into there. And then with a CC ticket, it should take you to the other one. Yep, there we go. And that's the same for the other side as well. So a lot of noises. Uh, there are ways of making this silent, but I just, I don't, I don't. But how complicated this one is, just with all like the, the bits kind of intersecting with each other, like I didn't feel like experimenting too much and going with the cleaner, fancier designs because I just need it to work and I don't care how it works. I don't care if it's making... No, I don't care if it's screaming. I just I want it to work, you know? But anyways, uh, now uh, let's look at this bit here. So this is going to be the cargo area down below. So we've got the cargo ticket thing from earlier. Yeah, so the cargo ticket would take you down, and then that would go into... Whee! Oh, too low. That would take you... Uh, there we go. Uh, into here. This is the cart processing area. Basically, these are a bunch of uh, item unloaders. Each of these will empty out the minecarts and stuff, but to actually get the minecarts in there, I had to do a bit of uh, redstone trickery down here, and it's actually broken. That's cool. Oop. Basically, the way that it works is that it will send a minecart through here, and using a bit of trickery, uh, we can actually get the minecart to go up and go through this block here and onto this track. And that there is an item unloader. It will basically hold the minecart there until all the items are emptied out of it. I can actually quickly show you this. So I'm going to put in put in like these 28 torches. There we go. Okay. So it'll go into there, go through the block, then it will hold here and uh, pick up or drop out all of the items down to a water stream that will go down to my base. And then when it's done, it'll get sent off. And over there, it, it kind of visually glitches, but it, it is on top trick. Uh, it'll go over here, get smacked by the cactus, break down into the hopper, and then go over here into this uh, here, which is actually a water tube, which then sends it up to the top into a minecart storage area to then be used later in the system. Yay! And then this bit down here, I've got a bit of redstone finagling down here, and basically all this does is makes it so if there is multiple minecarts, it will organize them into, like, separate bays. Okay, so the basically if you just send a bunch of minecarts through... They'll kind of go into each bay individually, and then when it's emptied, it'll reset the bay back to normal by just sending out a pulse on the way in and a pulse on the way out. And that means that the bays will basically only be accessible if they aren't being used. And if every single bay is being used, then the minecarts will just start to loop around this kind of bit here. There is a chance that they'll end up bouncing into each other, but... I, uh, oh, uh, probably no tutorial for this bit, because Jesus Christ, uh... <laughs> And like I, I don't think I want to burden you with this monstrosity. Like, look at, look, look at this. I'm using like inverted torches into regular and inverted torches, and then I had to fight with a lot of like timings. Like sometimes the repeaters and stuff added up to too much delay that it wouldn't turn like the track in time. So the minecart actually went over this too quickly, and oh, what a, what a, what an absolute mess. Hello, but it is now done. So we can get on to doing some of the. Uh, detailing around here and actually making a building because, well, you know, this is a mess. Oh, actually, there's what I've fallen down here so many times. Oh, <laughs> come on, let me up. Oh, my word. There's actually one more bit uh, just over here is the uh, the actual chest storage. So I've got a bunch of minecart chests, like a bunch of them, and some regular ones. And behind here is a little tube of water that goes down to that lower area so that the minecart gets broken, send up the tube goes into the hoppers down here and then starts collecting into here. But there's also a little hopper underneath this bottom minecart chest, which will basically just uh, send any minecarts down into the ticket machine to then be used, well, in the ticket machine. So that way I don't have to go manually restock it at all. I just realized I've forgotten something. Oh no. Um, I wanted to set up a way of having the first minecart, like the ticket minecart, get taken in. Oh, I've made a mistake. Basically, this bay shouldn't be able to be used. Like, you shouldn't be able to go into this bay because this is the bay used for the ticket minecart. And right now, when you send a minecart in, it will just kind of go into the first slot. But then if I was to send in, like, 
Just uh, a stake ticket. It'll send in a minecart up this tube. Ooh, there it is. And go down onto the slot directly on top of another minecart. Which is, yeah, that's not ideal. So, basically... Uh-oh. Um, I don't really know how to fix that right now. Oh, I, was, I thought I was done. No. Okay, I have managed to fix it on the BH side. Basically, I've got a detector rail above a monostable circuit, and I'm using quasi-connectivity to connect it up. Ooh, fancy me, look at that. And it goes into here, once it unpowers, it will switch the track up here, and then it will reset with this pulse extender here. So basically, the first one will go down, the second one will go forward. And I tested it with a full train, and I think it works fine. So now... Now, now we need to try and figure out how to get this over onto my side. This is going to be a bit more difficult with how noodly... Oh, my word. I'm so close, but it, it it's almost there, but it just doesn't work. It's too slow. Press the button. Go over to here. And you should see the first one go down, second one go forward, and then the rest go down. But look, look it, it's... It, it, one of them came over here, even though the... Oh, even though this turned in time this one went over here it was like a fraction of a second like it, it's probably one tick off of working so i need to somehow shave off a single tick in this and i just i don't know how so i feel like i'm kind of at my limit the only thing i'd really do is move it back but i can't because that's here now so i i, I don't think redstone dust works i might just give it a go with redstone dust to see what happens Ooh. Okay, cargo ticket into here. That should send it down. Correct, and it didn't flick it. Wait, did that work? I think that worked. Try that again with multiple minecarts this time. So cargo ticket, regular ticket, or regular minecarts. Okay, that works. So now, what if does it work just without a regular minecart as well? So if I had just two minecarts going back to back. That still works. Ticket in here. Three, two, one. That works too. Wait, does this just work? I guess, yeah, like, this redstone line here isn't doing anything except from just powering this block. But when this torch unpowers, it unpowers the redstone, so effectively this torch and this redstone are the exact same thing. Yeah, like, that doesn't matter. Okay, that is actually amazing. Let's just do one final test. This time we're going to do a... Full test. Okay, come on. First one goes down. Oh, it works! It works! Yes, it works! Oh my god! Oh, it feels like it's being held together with duct tape and hopes and dreams, but oh, it works. I am... Um, oh. I think I think that means it's done. The, the station's done. Kinda. So, I guess the next step is going to be doing the uh, building. And this bit I am a bit worried about, as I have very little inspiration for actually making this station look nice. But whatever I do, it's going to be in a time lapse. And we are done, kind of. Uh, it's not finished entirely. Uh, it's not done entirely. I want to add in some more details and stuff. Uh, maybe add a clock on the front. Uh, and this side's obviously very bare. But this is a work in progress. I didn't expect to get everything done today. It's mainly wanting to get the functionality done. And the rest is kind of just there to, as a placeholder. But the interior is looking rather lovely. I am a big fan of this ceiling here with the mangrove. Oh, it looks beautiful. And they've got the ticket machine, which is looking nice as well. So really, from here, it is just going to be about trying to figure out how to connect this up to the rest of the place. So on the other side, it's pretty much the exact same, just mirrored. 
and this will be where it connects down to the lower area. But something I want to do in the future is out here, I want to add in like a little building, which will be for tickets. Because I know that I've got the ticket machine in here, but this pretty much only lets me hold a stack of each ticket type, really. Um, so if I have a building out here just as a way of having a big storage to restock them all later on. Normally I would have like hoppers back here to fill them back up, but since it's double sided, don't really have space for that. So that is where we're going to be leaving it for today. So I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you're interested, make sure you check out the Discord because we're going to have a bunch of uh, Rails stuff over there. There's always new discussions. If you want to see more of the Rails in the future, we're going to be doing plenty more episodes on this. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, subscribe to the channel and you'll see any updates and stuff on this. It's going to be a long-term project. So there's going to be plenty to show. And aside from that, like, comment, do the things, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye!